Praise the Lord, everybody. Dominic Baptiste, welcome to Biblical Essentials. Tonight, I'm going to be teaching on you've got power over fear, right? That God has come to give you, you know, lo power, love, and a sound mind. And, um, and we're going to take a look here in the Word of God and find out some, some pathways of refuge. Praise God, some, some, some pathways of refuge in regard to not living a life of fear. You know, sometimes you say, oh, I just don't have confidence. Is it, is it really con lack of confidence or is it a fear that somebody will identify that you may not be as smart as you want them to think you are? Stuff like that, you know, or that you may not be that smart at all and that you, you feel like you're not, but in actuality, you are. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, let's get in the Word. Let's look in the book. Let's hear what the Lord has to say to us. Amen. Let's, um, let me just take a couple of minutes to invite a few people. Amen. Hey. Yes, I would. To join us live and, um, and see some great things. See what God is doing in the land. Amen. They'll get the notice. Anyway, so I've had a great day today. And I hope that you've had a great day as well. Um, you know, we spent most of the day traveling. Amen. Two and a half hours to a meeting, two and a half, you know, the two and a half back from the meeting. Um, so that was a little exhausting. <laughs> but excuse me, the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I believe that good things will come from those. And I pray that you're having successful days. Amen. In whatever your endeavors are, if you work for yourself or if you work for someone else, may God prosper you abundantly. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so, so thankful for all of you because I know that God is doing something wonderful through each and every one of you. So let's go to our key scripture for tonight. And I think I said it. I didn't know. I don't know if I said it on this take or the previous one, but it is in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. And it says this. It says, oh no, I got to read 6. Amen. It says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which has been which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. It says, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I know that many of us did not. Um, we look and we say, oh, I'm not fearful. I'm not afraid. You know, the devil doesn't scare me. But there's more to that spirit of fear than that. And so I want to read it again out of the Amplified Version, except I'm only going to read, um, I'm going to start with seven. It says, in the Amplified, it reads like this, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or craven." or cringing, or fawning fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, praise God, the Holy Ghost, and of love, and of calm and well-balanced mind slash thinking, and discipline and self-control. Amen. So when God has not, remember who he's talking to here. The Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy. He's reminding Timothy, Timothy, you know, those who follow God don't look back. Amen. Don't get out there and get scared. Keep doing what God has called you to do. This is the word to you tonight. Praise the Lord. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Keep walking by faith and not by sight. He's saying this. He says, he says this. This is why I remind you to stir up. Amen. Rekindle the embers of, fan the flames of, keep burning the gracious gift, the gracious gift of God. Amen. The inner fire that is in you by, by the means of laying out of hands with those of the elders at your ordination. Now, I'm going to say this in, in, a diff, in a little bit different way. It says, I would remind you to stir up, amen, the gift of God. What does it mean when we say stir up the gift of God? 
You know, when we look at this stir up, stir up is anazopirio. Um, and that word actually means to zoom in or to kindle, to reset a fire, to stir up. Um, it says to kindle up a fire, as in pouring fresh fruit fuel on it, like when you're doing a barbecue, to, to, to add some more heat to it. How do you stir up your gifts? How do you stir them up? Stir it up. Remember the stories that, remember the, the things that happened in your life, in your spirit walk, when God was calling you. What happened? You know, um, I, was, I spoke to a brother many, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and the Lord told me, in essence, to tell him this. Stir up the gift. Remember when you used to stay up all night and pray and read the word and you would preach the word that you heard, amen, in the spirit. And you just stand there and preach it in the spirit, amen, so that, you know, when you got your chance, you were going to be ready, right? <laughs> amen. So that's stirring up your gift. It's reminding yourself, reminding your soul, renewing your covenant. When we talk about stirring up our gift, remember that. Remember when you used to give the word of the Lord, if you were saved young, you gave the word of the Lord prophecy to all your little animals, to all your dolls, to all your friends. <laughs> you know, this is the word of the Lord <laughs> to you right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know, um, you know, and you, you gave them all the word of the Lord. You gave all your, you know, you taught your friends how to raise their hands and, and receive what God is saying. That when we talk about stirring up the gift Amen. That means go back. Go, you know, you, when you stir in a bowl, you stir from the bottom and around. Around the sides and turn it over. Right? You stirring it up. That's right. Mix it up. And so what he said, he, he said, renew that love that you had for God that came through prayer, that came through fasting, that came through um, reading the word, that came through meditating on the scriptures, that came through seeking the face of the Lord. Remember that. And then he says, and he says, which is in you, that gift that you have is in you by the putting on of my hands. So he's saying, he said, when I laid my hands on you, amen, I imparted to you in the spirit, the gifts, amen, that are in you right now. So, you, you, you know, I love Paul. He, he says, we're not those who, who are afraid. We're not those people who look back. Right, we're not scared, you know. I ain't never scared. You know, you have to tell you have to tell yourself times sometimes you can do this. You can do this. Preach the word. I don't care how many people in that audience preach. If it's two or if it's ten thousand, preach. Amen. Speak the word like God gave it to you. You don't have to be anybody else on that stage. You don't have to be anybody else at your job. You don't have to be anybody else in your family. You know? Your husband, your husband, your wife, they fell in love with you the way that you are, right? I mean, of course, we're always perfecting and refining ourselves, but we, you don't have to become someone else. You don't have to do things the way that someone else does them. You know, God, gave, God created you unique and special just the way you are. It is the enemy that comes to attack your confidence. It's the enemy that comes to pull you down. It's the enemy that makes you timid and insecure. But the very next scripture, he covers that because he says, he says, this, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. Amen. And when we look at this word for fear, right, we're looking at timidity, insecurity, um, self-doubting, amen, dilea is, how, is what it is. Um, and it's translated for, directly as timidity. But when you look at it in the Amplified, it says um, cowardice, a craving and cringing, fawning fear. Like, oh, it's just too much. God, I can't take it. I can't go out there. Lord, what am I do now? I've seen people do that. You know, and, and, and you look at them and say, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear. But a power, 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 Lord, power. Amen. So no matter what you're doing for the Lord, amen, whether it's whether it's your everyday life, your marketplace life, whether it is your home life, right? You cannot be afraid. You've got to stand up to every challenge because you're equipped for every challenge. Say it the Lord God, you are. You are equipped for every good work, for every challenge that you may come upon in the Lord. And you know what? He gives you victory in every instance. Do we do things perfectly? Not always. Not always. But there are times when this, when we have to do it 
to the best of our ability. And see, God rewards effort. Everybody doesn't reward effort. We live in a world where you win or lose. You know, where you win, you won, okay, good, then here's the prize. You lost, oh, sorry to hear that. Next time, peace. You know, oh, you're great, you know. <laughs> no, you know, but the, the Lord rewards your effort. He rewards your best foot forward. Why? Because he's, he's, still, he's not just rewarding you for coming halfway, but what he's doing is he's building your confidence. He's, he's letting that experience build your confidence. Right? So that as you grow, as you continue to experience, you grow stronger in Him. Your faith goes, grows stronger in Him. Sometimes you have to have some wins. Some wins, right? When you've been in life and you've been beaten down in life, you need some wins. Little, you start with little wins, whatever it is, you just need to win. And those wins, step by step, W I N S wins, they bring you to a place of confidence. That you come in not to arrogance, but you have confidence that the, the, the words that you have studied, they'll come back to your remembrance. You have confidence that the, the lessons that you have learned, they will come back to your memories. Even your body. Your body has muscle memory. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, one day you can do it one day without thinking about it. Why? Because you got muscle memory. Your muscle knows, my muscle knows that this hand sanitizer is sitting on my desk. Right? I reach for it so much, sometimes I can look the other way and just reach over and pick it up. Why? It knows that this zero calorie, <laughs> some bubbly water, bless the Lord, is in this can and it's sitting right there. If I want it, my, my mind, I don't even have to look for it. It's usually sitting right, right in the same spot where this little circle is on my desk. <laughs> I don't have to search for it. You know? That's muscle memory. I don't have to look for it. My mind says, pick it up, there it is. Right? Same thing with you. Same thing with doing the works and doing right works of righteousness in the Lord. Amen. Serving God. Praise God. It's muscle memory. When something happens bad, what's the first thing out of your mouth? That's muscle memory. That's brain memory. And we can re we can write and rewrite. Um, our brain remember we can write and rewrite our thoughts we can write and rewrite our responses simply by studying to show yourself approved a workman unto God that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth meditate on this word praise God and when we meditate on his word then it brings life and that more abundantly it brings that word back to us the one of the we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Holy Spirit will what bring all things to your remembrance. So, muscle memory, muscle memory, same thing with the brain, right? Studying the Word of God, meditating on the Word of God, rehearsing the scriptures, praying the scriptures, and watch God remove the fear that was holding you bound. God doesn't want you hell bound, but he wants you to be strong and prosperous in him. The favor of the Lord is upon you. And it's up to you to walk. You can be sitting at home just glowing in the glory of God. But what good is that? If you're not out doing the work that God created you to do. You know, when we encounter fear, what is fear? Now, I love this. Fear, one thing. God created three things. To, to give us victory, to show you. It's like, we can beat you up three different ways. We can beat you up fear. Amen. We have power, we have love, and we have a sound mind. We have the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have the love of God. Amen. And we have good, clear thinking. <laughs> the Word of God. Amen. Let this, word be, let this Word be written in your heart. God said that He would write His Word upon the tables of our hearts. So no matter what you're facing, God, I'm getting ready to go into this meeting. Lord, I, I'm really, I know I'm speaking to my peers, but I do not want to look stupid. <laughs> I do not want to say anything wrong. It doesn't have, it, I really need this to be perfect. And then when you go out there, you speak in boldness and in confidence. Why? Because God has given you every good and perfect gift. He's giving you the tools that you need. Now you must be a wise person, wise steward over the time he gives you and do things like prepare yourself. Praise God. Prepare yourself. Study. 
So when you stand up to speak and speak boldly and speak rightly, you can say, I've studied to show myself approved of God, a workman, amen, one who is trained both in knowledge and in execution of tasks, right? That I don't have to be ashamed when I'm standing up here because I, I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And then when you do that, amen, rightly dividing the word of truth, break it down. <laughs> amen that's one you know that that's just that's the lord that's how he works now you know when you're encountering fear though and sometimes fear can be whelming i won't say overwhelming but it can be whelming which means that it pushes you back it pushes you back it makes you stop it makes you go oh it makes you stop and think but it's okay to stop and think amen as long as what you're thinking is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God is my God. He is my life. He is my sustainer. Right? One of the um, one of the many, many tools that I've used over the years, this is one of my favorite scriptures, especially when I'm feeling challenged. Right? And it is in Psalms 27 and 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Nobody. <laughs> The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Nobody. When the wicked one, even my enemies, came, and my foes came up on me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though these people talking about me behind my back trying to plot and get me fired, or, you know, they're mistreating me at the church, or my friends are acting shady going out and not inviting me, or whatever it is. You know, my spouse is coming home late with no explanation. Or I'm not going to stop and go, oh, woe is me. The worst things in the world could be happening to me right now. The word is this. The Lord says when the wicked, the wicked thoughts that are not from him, the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, those who oppose you, came up on you to eat of your flesh, meaning came up on you. And you notice he says, Does it, it didn't come up on you to eat of your, your spirit. He didn't come up on you to eat of your soul. He didn't come up on you to destroy you. He came up on you to eat of your flesh. What are the works of the flesh? Fear is one of them. He came up on you to eat of that fear. Just eat on it to make it aggravate you, Right? And so God doesn't want you to have the spirit of fear, but of power. So when, he, when they come to eat flesh, all they're going to run into is Holy Ghost. Bite me, you might get the devil cast out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Talk about me, you're going to be singing my praises. Ask Barak when he was called to, to um, destroy, you know, prophesy against the children of Israel. What did he do? He went and blessed them. He couldn't help it. He could not help it. Why? Because the spirit of God made him. That's fine. I'm not going to be afraid because the very, the very trap you set, ask Naaman, you know, ask him is not a good thing. The very trap you set will be yours. I don't want no trap, no trap to fall up on you, but be careful. I belong to Jesus. I'm doing the work of the Lord. He loves me. He may love you too, but he don't love you. And you know, and then, but you could say God doesn't love people who work, uh, who work wickedness. It doesn't matter what you do. He does not honor wickedness. He does not honor backstabbing, manipulation. He doesn't honor trickery. None of that. None of that. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those that seek his face. Blessed are those that do his work. Just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing to honor the Lord so that God will be glorified in you. It says, the Lord is my light, which means he, he shows me what's hidden in darkness. And my salvation, he saves me. Praise God. Whom shall I fear? If God is saving me and showing me the way, I don't have to be afraid of anything. The Lord is my strength. Praise God, when I'm feeling weak and just overtaken and worn down. I mean, of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Nobody. It says, when the wicked one, even my enemies, came up on me to, and, and even my enemies and my foes, came up on me to eat of my flesh. The flesh, the only flesh they're eating is not going to be me responding and cussing. It's not going to be me um, talking back. It's not going to be me putting together my little team here at the office. It's not going to be me, you know, calling, you know, whomever to talk about. You know, it's not, there's no flesh here. I'm going to pray for you. 
Believe God for the highest and the best for you. Amen. Encourage you to go on in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Like I told in the in the study the other night, I'm going to believe God that you get a promotion so that you can be promoted on to greater success this other way, the other way for me. And then God turned around and promoted me too. <laughs> That's God. That's how he works. That's how he works. God is in the blessing business because every soul belongs to him. He's concerned about, he's as much concerned about the people that attempt to attack you as he is about you. We're all his. And you know, what do you do when the person that, that is your enemy is a Christian? What, oh, they can't be Christian. Yes, they can. <laughs> what do you do? You pray. What do you do? You don't give them any flesh to respond. What do you do? You show the love of Jesus. What do you do? You live above the noise. So as their gossip goes forward, the glory of God falls upon you. Amen? Amen. It says this. It says this. It says they, when they came to eat of flesh, they didn't find any. Right? So they stumbled and fell. Every attempt and every attack upon you came to nothing. Will come to nothing. Amen. The host should encamp against you. They, I mean, they got a whole bunch of people on their team. Look at that. You know, the, he, he says this. He says, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. Wow. First it was just the enemies and the foes. Now it's a host. And now it's, you know, um, now they're hosting war. <laughs> right? You know, first it was just them coming, talking noise. Now they're holding war against you. He says, in this one, he says, um, let me get to it. And though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of confidence. He is giving you confidence that he is with you. He is giving you confidence over that you are victorious. He is giving you confidence that you have overcome the wicked one. He is giving you confidence in him. God, I'm trusting you to bring me through this. God, I'm trusting you to preserve my job. Because preserving my job preserves my family, my car, my groceries, my bills. Amen. See, God didn't, didn't come to bring all that controversy in your life. Amen. But he came so that we would trust him and know God's going, I got you. Don't worry about this. Amen. So God did not give us the spirit of fear, but he gave us confidence in him. Which, include, which means power, love, and soundness of mind. Amen. Now, that's one thing that I do is I turn to the light out of the darkness. Amen. I remember that I am saved and, and covered and protected. Praise God. And I call for that word to stand. I call for that word to stand. God, I will be confident that you will destroy the works of my enemies and my foes. You will stop. You will stop this war. You will stop the um, the host that's coming against me. You will stop the enemies and the foes. And that's what he does. Praise God. Amen. That's Psalms 27, 1 through 3. And then Psalms 91. This is a blessing just for us. It says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, that had to be written by someone who had been in a place, praise God, where it was just him and God. That type, you know, these types of words are written by individuals that have had some deep experiences with God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. How you know? Because he did it, right? And my fortress, praise God, I ran to him to hide and he protected me. He surrounded me. Amen. It says, my God in him will I trust. This is David writing. So what is he saying? He said, he, he, said, he is my refuge. I can run to him in the time of trouble. Amen. He is my fortress. He surrounds and protects me. It says, and he is my God. In him will I trust. Where do you think David learned that? He learned that in so many stations in his life. And I think that if we study him, we will see, amen, where he learned it. He learned it with the lion. He learned it with the bear. He learned it, amen, out fighting Goliath. He learned it when he went up against, um, when, when the men came and took all of, his, all of their wives and his own men turned their backs on him. You know, it's a hard lesson to learn as a leader. You know, the very people that you serve, the very people that you um, 
or wake up in the middle of the night to take their calls and go help and pray and give them your last $10 or $5 or $1 or whatever, you know, and then they turn around and leave you just because they see, you know, because something has happened. And they, they, they determine within their own mind, oh, this person can't be a God. Now they took their family. You know, this person can't be of God. Now they're unemployed. This person can't be of God. Now this and that, this and that has happened. And he had to turn around and pray for them. Because anybody else looking at David would look and say, he's a renegade. He doesn't listen to the, he doesn't listen to the king. Y'all heard that word before? <laughs> it's such a big joke, isn't it? But this person's a renegade. They don't listen to um, the authority. Well, the authority at the time was Saul. And what they didn't know was that David had more respect for Saul than could even be imagined. When he had the chance to cut his cut his ankles, cut you know, just kill him, he didn't. Why? Because he honored that that was the man of God. You know, we never know how God is making another leader. We never know why he would put them in the position that he put them in. We have to trust and know that the, it is the Lord's doing, amen, in the making of any person's character. Amen. And it is good in his eyes. Praise God. Praise God. So he says, for surely he will deliver thee from the hand of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall trust. This, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Meaning God has the word. Amen. And he, that word is protecting you. The truth is on your side. Praise God. Even, no matter what the truth is. And that's one thing I love about God. You know, sometimes the truth is you did it. But the fact that you was willing and bold enough and strong enough to say, I did it, will get you honor from the Lord. Amen. Will get you your job back. Will get you maybe um, chastised but not fired. <laughs> you know, excuse me, reprimanded, thank you, Lord, but not fired. So God has a way of blessing us that when you look and go, that person should have been gone a long time ago. <laughs> you know, that should, I should have let them go a long time ago. They should have been gone a long time ago from here. And the Lord just keeps on blessing them. Man, they get fired from more jobs, but they keep still keeping finding one. Why? Because God is perfecting their character. Amen. He is protecting them. He is being their shield and their buckler. See, God is on our side. Amen. He is protecting us. He is keeping us. We don't have to fear. One thing, let, let's take a look at this. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty, of, uh, of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know how close you have to be standing to someone to be in their shadow? In order for you to, like if someone is standing here, that means their shadow is going to fall probably about here, depending on the time of day, right? In order for you to be in their shadow, you have to be this close to them. Like right up on them. A, a arm's length away to be covered in their shadow. You know, so that means that we got to stay close to God. He said, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. The word also says, resist the devil, resist fear, resist torment, resist distraction, resist distress, resist the words of people who just claim want to talk. Resist them, resist the devil and he will what? He will flee. Why? Because he realized, I don't have any conversation for you. We don't have anything to talk about. Goodbye. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, blessed, let me, let me call you later. Praise God. Amen. So when we think about this, this one thing, we must keep in mind that draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you. Amen. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you abide under his shadow. You make your home under his shadow. You live in his presence. I mean, you stay there. Amen. Amen. And then lastly, as a, a, um, a weapon, a, a lifestyle, a tactic of overcoming fear, being victorious over fear, I want you to keep this in mind. When Jesus sent out his, when you find out that you just, it just doesn't seem to be working for you by yourself and you need the help of the Lord and you're calling on God, but you still feel the battle, the warfare. It always pays to have a partner. 
amen, a prayer partner, amen, a ministry partner, somebody who you can be honest with, who you can go, somebody who you can go out and preach with, somebody who you can pray with, somebody who can, who will go on a fast. If you say, I'm going on a fast, come go on a fast with me. They'll fast with you, even if it's just for half a day. <laughs> you know, one of my good, one of my good girlfriends, I mean, I was starving, y'all. I told, I said, okay, she asked me to call and ask me to fast with her for three days. So, you know, we were in college and I'm thinking like fasting, like we did in my home church, a three day fast is three days with water. <laughs> Not her. I didn't find out to the last day. The three days for her was three day, three full days, right? But at six o'clock you could eat at sundown. I was like, what kind of fast is that? <laughs> so you know, I was, I said, I said you went where? I said I thought you were fast. She said I was fast in at sundown. I was like, oh Lord. I said, oh God. And so I didn't, I didn't grow up with these, with these custom crafted fasts that we have. I grew up in a church with, that said, you know, you're fasting today. That means from 6 a.m. today to 6 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> you know, we're fasting all day. You know, if, if we were going to break the fast at 8, he would have said break the fast at 8. I just, I didn't know that we could, you know, you get to fast from TV. <laughs> and, and stuff like that. It just was not heard of in, in how I was raised. And so, you know, now even God doesn't let me get away with that stuff. <laughs> it's like, Really? Okay, I got to fast for you. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, so I, I just didn't know those types of fasting existed. Are we just going to fast until lunch? Okay, we're going to skip breakfast. Is that the point? You know, didn't know. But, you know, but you have a good friend who will fast with you. Even if they don't fast the whole time you do. <laughs> Amen. You have someone who will pray with you. You have someone who will stand in faith with you. Amen. Who believe God with you. See, I'm, I believe that God has, has assigned people in our lives to believe God with us for things, to fast with us, to pray with us, to stand on his word with us, to send you encouraging scriptures on this topic. You know, it's time that we get back to having good Christian friendships and not good gossip buddies. Nope, I'm just going to say it. Not just good gossip buddies, but good Christian friends who can still be regular friends. We're going shopping. We're going to, you know, we may go to lunch. We'll go do whatever else we do. Amen. But if we need prayer, I can say, hey, girl, I need you to pray for me. My head is banging. You know, I need you to pray for me. I'm getting ready to go in this meeting and I really need to work out. I need, to, this is what I need to happen. Amen. I need you to pray for me because I can get ready. To, and they will pray. And you have confidence that your friend will pray. Because you know why? You know the ones that pray? When You know how you'll know when you come out and it may be a couple of days later, they'll ask or a couple of hours later, whatever. How'd your meeting go the other day? Did you get what you needed? Good, good, good. I, I prayed and I was praying about this, this, and this. Not that they have to tell you, but you know because it's a concern to them. They are concerned about you like you are concerned about yourself. Or when, they, or when it doesn't work out, they don't just go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To me, that just says, too bad, too bad for you. <laughs> you know, they, they come when they have words that are encouraging and say, well, you, I love my one girlfriend. She said, well, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, but I'm just going to believe God that it work out for you. <laughs> That's my girl. Yes, she is. That's my sister in the Lord. And she, she's, you know, working in tech the way I do. It's a lot of people don't know anything about tech beyond the internet, <laughs> you know, and what you can do on the web. So, you know, she'll say, she says, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, but I pray for you. <laughs> Just let me know how it, how it comes out. <laughs> you know, that's a good friend though. You know, and, and same here in some stuff that she's into. But, you know, God does that. Now, here's the point. When you find that you're being whelmed, never overwhelmed, just whelmed by the works of the enemy, attack of the enemy, then what you need to do is you need to get you a good sister or a good brother and pray. You need to learn to fight back to back and shoulder to shoulder with someone. And if that means you got to go through some things with them so you can teach them how to fight back to back and shoulder to shoulder, then that's what you have to do. Say, look, when I ask you this, I need you to pray like this. And then you show them. And then you show them by doing it for them and with them in the instances in their life. And then you, you show them by inviting them to pray for you on specific topics. You can walk people into a good friendship. 
And man, you can walk people into a good relationship simply by teaching them what you know. That's what God called us to do. You know that, right? When he told them, look at what he tells them in Matthew, in Mark, Matthew chapter 10. He sends them out. What he says, he says this. He says, go into the way of the Gentiles and into, um, and into the cities of the Samaritans. Not, it says, into the cities of Samaritans, enter ye not. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. Right? And so when he sent them out, he sent them out. How? He sent them out two by two. And so sometimes you need a partner. You know, in our, all our lives, we need a partner. But sometimes you really need a partner to get in there and to help you battle for your mind's sake. You know, to help you battle for your heart's sake. You know, you're getting, we have, we have people that call the ministry all the time that are getting ready to go into job reviews. Um, they're getting ready to go into uh, reviews with, like, um, we got some social services calls and some um, disability. I didn't know getting disability was so hard. <laughs> but, hey, man, you know, it's clear <laughs> you're walking on a walker. <laughs> you really can't go work that, be a mailman anymore. Duh. <laughs> um, but you know, hey, you got to defend your position. So, um, you know, you go into, do they go into disability and go have those reviews and then, you know, criminal court, you know, or, or something else, you know, they're, they're facing something, you know. Um, and so, you know, pray for me, you know, that I will. And so, you know, we pray for them and we, we touch and agree with them. And the thing is, you know, if you need someone to touch and agree with you in prayer, feel free to contact us here at Biblical ETV. You can send us your prayer request by going prayers at Biblical ETV. Um, or you can call our number, which is on our website. <laughs> it's 831-854-7536. 831-854-7536. Now, we don't answer the phone very often, but you can leave your, um, voice, your prayer request on the recording. And when you do, someone will either contact you back directly to pray with you live if that's what you ask for, or we will pray for you. And if you leave us a number or an email address, we will let you know that we have prayed for you and we're believing God with you and send you some encouraging scriptures to stand strong in the Lord. You are not alone. God is with you. One of the biggest fears of people in life, in this life, is that they're handling life by themselves. And you don't have to. The Lord said, the Holy Spirit is with you forever. He is. Not only that, God has given you angels. Put your angels the angels go fight these demons that are fighting my mind. Amen. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fight these demons. Help me to win. In the name of Jesus. God, you you are my my shield and my buckler. But you God has also given you some some um some an armor. Amen. He's given you some weapons. Amen. You know, you have a shield of faith and a sword of the spirit. And these are both defensive and offensive gifts. You have the helmet of salvation to cover your mind and to cover your thoughts. You know, one thing that psychologists have even said is that if you begin to sing the Our Father prayer, it overrides other thoughts in your head. I've tried it. It's worked for me. <laughs> Amen. You know, I start to say it, and sometimes the battle is so strong, you can't even get through it to the end. So that's when you have to sit, open up the Bible, go to Matthew 6, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And then here comes another thought, go back. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us and get it until you get to the end of it. Keep reading it, keep saying it, speak the word. And watch God bring clarity to your thoughts. Remind yourself, I have a helmet of salvation. I hear, the, I hear the Lord's voice. I am his servant. I hear the Lord's voice and another I will not follow. Amen. When you fight and you win with the word, you have the power. Amen. You have the love of God in your heart. Amen. And so that gives, and then he gives you a sound mind by bringing your thoughts into line with his thoughts. See, God's giving you victory over fear. Don't get caught in that trap. Shake it. Be confident that God is your father. It is he who has made you and not you yourself. 
Listen, guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. I pray to God that if you're battling in the spirit of fear or when you battle the spirit of fear or have a lack of confidence about something that you will trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You don't ever, we don't ever, we don't ever have to be afraid. God will order your steps. He will direct your path. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against God. His word is a light unto your feet and a lamp unto your path. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we just honor you tonight in the name of Jesus. We lift you up and we exalt you. We thank you, God, that you give us victory over the enemy. That when the enemy would try and you know, disturb our, our thinking, cloud our minds, mess with our peace, Dear Father God, that you come along, Lord God, and that you said that you will give us peace as long as, long as we keep our minds stayed on thee. Lord God, that we are not overcome by fear, Lord God, but that we overcome fear, Lord God, with power, love, and a sound mind. Lord God, we overcome fear with your word. We overcome fear with your worship. We overcome fear by sticking close to you and knowing that the closer we get to you, amen, the enemy just takes off and runs in a different direction. So as we find challenges, God, we pursue you all the more. We will seek you all the more. We will love you all the more so that, God, we know, God, that you would destroy the path of the enemy. Lord God, we thank you for bringing, Lord God, partners into our lives to help us do the work that you have called us to do, heal the sick raise the dead, and cast out devils. Dear Father God, so the very devil that comes to oppress, Lord God, has to be cast out and run in the other direction. We thank you, God, that you have given us victory in our lives and in our thinking. And we just honor you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Check the notes. I'm going to post um, how you can connect with us here on the ministry. If you're watching us on Facebook, um, on Twitter, on youtube or if you connected to us through instagram please like follow share um, and subscribe we'd love to minister to you amen and with you and we'd love to hear back from you many blessings to you this evening i'm dr dominique baptiste and this is biblical essentials good night